Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, the ancient of days. Thank you, the mighty God, in whose hands all things are possible. We decree tonight that somebody shall walk in dominion. We shall walk in dominion in the name of Jesus. We shall walk in dominion in the name of Jesus. We shall walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, I give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. The Bible says to you belong power and majesty in the name of Jesus. Father, the hour has come. Come and bless your people. Come and touch your people. Come and open doors, O oh God. Come and fill the atmosphere with thy fire. Father, come and have your way. The hour has come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you, the ancient of days. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We decree tonight that great things shall happen in the name of Jesus. We decree tonight that somebody shall walk in dominion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are wonderful. You are a powerful God. There is no God that is like you. Heaven and earth are adoring you, and we are joining the hosts of angels to decree and declare that you are the mighty God of heaven and earth. There is no one that is like you, O oh God. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name, mighty King of glory. We are calling on the power of your name to begin to take over the atmosphere, O God. Let your power begin to fill the atmosphere, O Lord. All the molecules of the air, we command them now to begin to receive the blood of Jesus and be consecrated so that even as we inhale the air, we are inhaling power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We command every power of darkness, every principality and power of darkness that may come against this prayer in any form. Let them be arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, King of glory, we recognize our sins and we ask for forgiveness of sins, O oh God. Wash us such that we shall be whiter than snow. In the name of Jesus, Father, O oh Lord, blessed be your name. Only you that can forgive sins, O oh Lord. May our sins never stop us from coming to you tonight. As a matter of fact, we come with our sins to you. Asking you to cleanse us, asking you to strengthen us, asking you, Lord, O oh Lord, to wash us with your precious blood, such that we shall be whiter than snow. In the name of Jesus, Father, show mercy to your people. In Micah 7, verse 19, your word says that you will tread our sins on the foot and haul all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Father, the hour has come. Come and touch your people again. Come and show mercy again. Who will show mercy to your people if not you? Father, Lord, you are the one that showeth mercy. In Micah 7, verse 18, your word says that you are the God who returneth not his anger forever. Ever, but he showeth mercy to his people. Father, who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth our iniquities, as Micah 7 verse 18 says. And so, Father, we come to you tonight, knowing fully well that as we have come to you and ask for mercy, that you have shown us your mercy again. Yes, my Lord, in the name of Jesus. Your word says in Titus chapter 3 verse 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us. And so, Father, we anchor on your word. We anchor on your promises. We anchor on the power of your providence that you may touch your people specially this night. And bless us mightily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We begin to cover ourselves, Lord of Jesus. My dear friends, I don't know what you have in mind tonight. I don't know what you're expecting God to do for you tonight. But I want to tell you tonight that God has you in mind as he has come already to this prayer line to wait for us, to bless us. And so we are praying tonight that today is my day. I'm praying now for myself. I want you to pray for yourself. I want to declare that today is your day. Today is my day. It shall be well with me today. Testimony shall locate me today. Heaven shall locate me today. Angels shall locate me today. Today is my day. Wow, today is my day. In the name of Jesus. My morning glory will shine this night. In the name of Jesus. I will receive the favor of God tonight. In the name of Jesus. It shall be well with every member of my family tonight. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 137 verse 3. 
on the day I called, the Lord answered me. Yes, even as we call this night, the Lord shall surely answer his people. The Lord will not despise his own people. The Lord is a merciful God. I want you to know and believe and be expectant that God is going to answer you tonight in the name of Jesus. Psalm 143 verse 8, and the Bible says, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing life, of your unfailing love. For I have put my trust in you. Let the morning, let the morning, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I put my trust in you. Do you put your trust in the Lord? Surely the Lord shall bless you. Surely the Lord shall vindicate you. Surely the Lord will bring blessing, unfailing love your way. In the name of Jesus, I pray that he touches you tonight. May the power of his name touch you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible says, Second Chronicles chapter 12, verse 12, Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the lost anger turned away from him, and he was not totally destroyed. I am praying for somebody tonight. May God do in your life what he did in the life of Rehoboam. That mercy he showed to Rehoboam, may he show it to us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 41, verse 4. And the Bible says, Healing my soul, heal my soul, O Lord, for I have sinned against you. Father, O Lord, we have come to you. Come and have your way, Lord. Come and saturate us with your power. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We raise the banner of God over the prayer line. We invite the angels of God to begin to brandish the banner of the Holy Ghost, the banner of the blood of Jesus over the prayer line this moment. We are declaring victory for everyone tonight. We declare this season a season of victory in the name of Jesus. We begin to pray tonight that no power of the devil shall take my testimony, that no kingdom of darkness shall take your testimony in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Lord, locate me this night. Holy Spirit, locate me tonight. Father, change my ugly story tonight. In the name of Jesus, we come against every spirit on assignment to distort today's message, to re misrepresent today's message in the life and mind of anybody. We stand against such decisions of the satanic kingdoms in the name of Jesus. We stand against executive decisions of the devil. We overrule all their plans and we decree that all nothing they have planned shall be superimposed in our life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We cancel every satanic agenda against this prayer line. We cancel every mandate of the enemy against this prayer meeting tonight in the name of Jesus. We interrupt every evil wind directed at this prayer in the name of Jesus. We decree tonight that there shall be shifting of things in the spirit into our favor. We provoke supernatural bed tonight. We provoke supernatural bed of testimony tonight in the name of Jesus. We provoke supernatural bed of Christ Jesus in our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Every power of darkness that are in operation tonight, that have been assigned to attack this prayer meeting, we command their enterprise to be arrested now. Yes, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pierce the eyes of the enemies in the name of Jesus. Every evil altar that has been raised against us in the prayer meeting, we call upon the God of fire. Our Lord Jesus, who in Hebrews 12 and 29 is a God of fire, the consuming fire. May he come down, may his altar be the altar of fire. May the altar of God in this ministry begin to exercise arrows of fire against every power of darkness that may be coming against this meeting tonight. In the name of Jesus, no power of darkness shall stop us in the name of Jesus. I am unstoppable. You are unstoppable. We are unstoppable in the name of Jesus. Every evil altar that wants to stop us, we command such altars, let the earth open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of destruction, in the name of Jesus, we command them to be destroyed. Witches and wizards, we are standing against you now, blood sucking spirits, we command you to be destroyed now. Every power that want to de destroy every plan of God concerning us, we cancel in the name of Jesus. We stand against territorial spirits, we stand against district spirits, all their dominions and headquarters, we set them on fire in the name.
name of Jesus. Jesus. We provoke spiritual seed against the temples of the enemy, against occultic temples, against occultic temples, anywhere they may be tonight. Let the fire of God begin to destroy them tonight. In the name of Jesus, we begin to cover ourselves, Lord Jesus, everywhere where my blessings have been banked, where my blessings have been deposited. I retrieve them tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory for your wonders you are going to do tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. My dear friends in Christ, it is my great pleasure to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. And today we are going to take a very quick but short reading from the scripture, precisely from Luke chapter number 18, verse 38 to 39. Luke chapter 18, verse 38 to 39. And the Bible says, And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him, that he should be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the God of mercy showed him mercy. What God did in the life of the blind man, the blind Bartimaeus, is what he is going to do tonight in the life of somebody. But we have to do what Bartimaeus did. Bartimaeus had a stubborn problem. Bartimaeus had a situation in his life that people had made him a reproach. Situation made him a reproach. The culture made him a reproach. He had no friend. Everyone despised him. People felt that because of his sin, he was blind. Because the culture was teaching that anyone with such infirmity was because the person was a sinner. But we know that Jesus is a God of mercy. And he showed mercy to the blind Bartimaeus. And so when God showed him mercy, the result of the mercy was that God brought healing to the life of Bartimaeus. My dear friends in Christ, I have a question tonight. What did the Bartimaeus do that made him to get the attention of Jesus? Remember, this man was blind. All right? So he had not seen Jesus before. But he was hearing about Jesus, how Jesus was going about doing good. And one day he heard that Jesus was passing his way. Remember, he could hear, but he could not see. But he used the part of his life that was functioning to seek God. You see, God has given us legs. We're not crippled. Have you used your legs to seek Jesus? God has given us mouths. Have we used our mouth to seek Jesus? Have we used our ears, eyes, hands to seek Jesus? Bartimaeus was a blind man. But you know what? He was not blind in the mind. He was blind in the eyes. But the eyes of the spirit was open. However, the ears of Bartimaeus 
was alert and he used his, his ears that he, he used to hear about the word of God. He used to hear about the wonders that Jesus had been doing. He used it to seek the face of Jesus. All he asked was, when will Jesus pass my way? I know I am blind, but at least when will he pass this way? I don't know how he knew when Jesus would pass that way, but he stationed himself on that way. He used the power of his ears to be able to, de to de decipher when Jesus was around him. Many a time, we have everything at our disposal, even the sacramentals that God has given to us in the church to be an instrument to, to bring us close to Jesus. And yet we don't. My dear friends in Christ, Bartimaeus was a blind man. But, as, but when Jesus taught his life, he was no more a blind man. What Bartimaeus did is what we are going to do tonight. What did he do? The Bible tells us that Bartimaeus was groaning. He was shouting. He was supplicating. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. As he was declaring those prayers, people were shouting him down. Many forces were telling him, look, be silent. Both external forces, both internal forces were telling him to stop making noise. People told him, look, you are disturbing the peace of this place. We don't need you here. We don't need your voice here. Your voice don't count. Come on, could you close your mouth? Some believers have allowed these forces to successfully shut down their blessings. Some people of God, some children of God, have allowed the voices of the enemy to shut their voices of prayer. But the news was generating the voice of prayer. Prayer was coming out of his mouth. Even though that people were telling him that he was making noise, even though people were telling him to be silent, he continued to utter those prayers. God is still looking for people in spite of what the world says about you. It is time for us to stand our ground and be people of prayer. If there's anything that I see that is worthy to be emulated in, in, in the Muslim people, it is the way they are bold enough to pray, even though that they know that people know that they are evil. All right? And yet, they pray publicly. They, they don't waste time to pray. They want to identify them as Muslims. But those who call themselves Christian, they are not even bold to even be identified with the Bible. Not bold to come to the church. Some come to the church, they, they just stand somewhere. When the church is over, they leave. But the blind Bartimaeus stood his ground. Even though the society did not need him, in spite of the situation, he continued to shout them all. He cried again. And he cried again. And he cried again. Today, the scripture calls us to cry again. To raise our voice in prayer. To raise our voice in prayer like the blind Bartimaeus. To cry out even more when people want to shut us down. To cry out even more than we used to cry. It is time to get up in the night and pray. It is time to get up in the morning and pray. It is time to make time even during the day, during your working hours, to make time to pray. It is the time. It is the time. To have the culture of prayer. To pray in season and out of season. The scripture tells us to pray all the time. Don't allow anybody to shout you out of your prayer life. Don't allow anybody or any situation to stop you from praying. Blind Bartimaeus was gone blind. Not that blind was his name. But it was his situation that gave him that name. But in spite of his being blind... He did not stop him from praying. There are so many people, their reason for not serving God is because of their infirmity. 
because of the infirmity. But blind Bartimaeus is telling us, that, look, it is good to serve God even when we are blind. It is good to see the face of God even when we are blind. That reminds me when I was living in Tennessee. My landlord then was a very nice man. I've said in this ministry some time ago. He goes to church in the morning. He will go and drop everybody in the house. Just drop them and go back. Go to back to the house, cross his leg and start watching television. He comes to the afternoon mass. And I will see him in the afternoon mass. The noonday mass. Daily, daily noonday mass. And he will come and drop the family and leave. And so one day I comforted him. I said, sir, I noticed a pattern that you drop your family in the church. You don't miss it. You come early, drop them and leave. I said, yes. That's what I do. I said, why? He said, because I'm angry with God. So wow, what happened? He said, when I was a small boy growing up, I was a mass servant, always at the altar, serving God. My father was also serving God. And all of a sudden, my father died. Why would God allow my father to die, making me fatherless? And so since then, I've not been happy with God, and I've stopped going to church. And this man, when I was then in Tennessee, was, he, he was in a, his uh, middle 70s, about 75 years, there about. And uh, I asked him, when was this happening? He said, when he was a small boy. Perhaps when he was about maybe 50 years or thereabouts. <laughs> Can you see that? Meaning that for over 50 years of his life, he, he has no touch with God because his father died. Because his father died. God, why would you take my father? What is his own infirmity? But it stopped him. He allowed it to be the reason why he would not serve God. He allowed the enemy to to shut him down, to silence him, to make him not to be going to church to serve God. He allowed the enemy to convince him to lose a passion for prayer. And he chose not to worship God again. That is this man's story. I don't know what your own story. There are so many people, and eat them a lot. And they tell me, I cannot serve God again. I mean, where is God when this situation happened? Why will God allow me to fail this exam several times? It's amazing what you hear if you go out to preach. If you meet people, you see people who are not serving God for, for reasons that will baffle you. But blind Bartimaeus, in spite of him, he's been blind. It did not stop him from serving God, from being a man of prayer, from seeking the face of God. If your situation is the reason why you're not serving God, this nice message is an invitation for you to come back. I know all over the world, so many people will be listening to this message, even over the YouTube. Perhaps you are listening to this message now through YouTube, and you have left God. You don't go to church again. You don't pray again. You don't think it is something worth it. The word of God tells you today to come back to the Lord. As we come back to the Lord, the Lord will surely bless us. The Lord will surely meet us at a point of need. The Lord will surely show up. Jesus. Let us go back to the Lord. When the blind Matthew was praying, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Very simple prayer. People around Jesus tried to hinder blind Bartimaeus from crying to Jesus. There are so many forces in the world waiting for a voice of a child of God that will, that, will, that will be raised up in prayer. That enemy wants to silence the voice of a child of God. Don't allow him to silence you. Blind Bartimaeus did not allow, G, did not allow the enemy to silence his voice. The crowd, the people, mounted pressure on him to stop praying aloud. They scolded him to stop praying. In fact, they told him, shut up, keep quiet. 
but he refused. He cried out the more. I like this attitude of the blind Bartimaeus. That attitude is well needed in our time today. Bartimaeus was not pleasing the people. Bartimaeus represents a true Christian. The love of a true Christian. A life where you do not allow the world to influence you. Instead, you influence the world. Wow. If you have allowed the world to influence you, to manipulate you, to affect your prayer life, to make your prayer life cold, then you have compromised actually because you have the responsibility not to allow the world to distract you. But news represents today a spirit of focus. Many people have stopped praying today because they have become friends to the world. They do not want to displease their friends, their boyfriends, their girlfriends. They do not want to, be, to displease them. And so they decided, decided that it is not worth it following Jesus. You can't imagine that the world has more friends than Jesus and is a pity. Even those who were around Jesus were the people who were telling Bartimaeus, be silent. And, and this, is, this, 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 this is very disturbing. Because those around Jesus, following Jesus, they should have known more. They should have known that the best life is to follow Jesus. How come this man wants to follow Jesus? This one, this man wants to send the message of Jesus. And they were silencing him. That means that even though they were around Jesus, yet they were far away. Do you hear that? Does it sound familiar? That somebody may be always in the, in the front pews in the church, but his character outside the church will baffle you. <laughs> Have you met such people? Have you met such people that they are in the top affairs in the church, they are in the administration of the church, but they have no mind of Christ. And they are the door preventing people from coming to the house of God. See, today we'll see how such people. That is the power of the world. The world do not want people to come to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. And so they were harassing this man, Bartimaeus, commanding him to be quiet. But Bartimaeus cried out louder. Even though they were scolding him to stop, but he continued to cry louder. Even though they were mounting pressure on him, yet they, he continued to shout louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He refused to give up. <laughs> and because he refused to give up, he got his miracle. He got his miracle. When Jesus saw that this man's voice was going higher and higher, he saw that the faith of this man was very strong, that you cannot talk this man out of his prayer. You cannot talk him out of his testimony. You cannot talk him out of his glory. He now decided to talk to him and say, call him. The same people who were telling Bartimaeus, silence. They were the ones that ran to him and said, the master is calling you. Can you see that? The the crowd, crowd is so is so unstable. I don't know how to put this. If, if you put your hope in man, you are finished. Crowd. Look at the crowd that was telling this man, silence. 
silent. The same crowd came to him. Oh, with a smiling face, the master is calling you. They changed. The same crowd that raised the palm branches shouting Hosanna be to the Holy One of Israel. Hosanna be to Jesus, the son of David. And they were praising Jesus. They were singing praises as Jesus on the on the on the court, that is on the donkey, walking or marching into Jerusalem, enter into Jerusalem. And they were praising him, the same crowd. Just few days later, few days later, few days later, we are shouting, crucify him, crucify him, the same crowd. If you listen to the crowd, you will miss your testimony. But news refused to listen to the crowd. And that was why he got his testimony. If today you will decide, I will not listen to the crowd. I will not follow the voice of the crowd. I will not follow the voice of many. Even if it is my voice, that it will be the only voice that will be crying out, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. I tell you, you end well. You end well. <laughs> the crowd is so unstable, so flippant. It's like the cloud. In fact, the crowd is like a cloud. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the, the cloud is very unstable. You see, the, the, the air around there, the sky is looking cloudy, and you think it's about to rain. All of a sudden, it changes to sunny. You say, oh, it's sunny. All of a sudden, it changes again. The mood keeps changing. That is how it is. For a crowd. When you throw the crowd, you are taking a big risk. The Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. That word desperately, desperately is, is <laughs> I like it a lot. That highlights that the heart of man is very, very longing for wickedness, deceitfulness. The crowd could be laughing at you, but it's because of what you have in your pocket. The crowd could be laughing at you, but it could be because of your beauty, because of your connections, because of your power. You don't need to be told that many people command friends because of their position. But when they lose their position, they lose their friends. That happens in the world, not in the house of God. Jesus loves us irrespective of who we are, whether we're blind or crippled. But the world loves us for what the world will give from us. Today, review your friends. Review the kind of friends you have around you. What kind of people are in your circle? If there are people you cannot be bold enough to say, let us pray. Call them off. Oh, yes. If there are people that do not want anything that want to, has to do with God, then do not allow them to swallow you. Talk to them about Jesus. They may rebel you. They may stand against you. Keep talking about Jesus. By the time you're talking about Jesus, you are speaking the word that they don't, the world do not want to hear. And they may run away from you. Jesus is talking to us today that if we do what Bartimaeus did, we shall get our blessings. Bartimaeus refused to take a no for an answer. Bartimaeus refused to be silenced. Bartimaeus refused for the enemies to deny him his testimony. And so he became very resolute in crying to the Lord. He stood his ground that he was not going to give up. 
<laughs> Jesus. You see that? He continued to cry the more. But Jesus did not even pay attention. Jesus kept going where he was going. People were all around Jesus. There was noise everywhere. You see that? But that did not stop Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus would have said, oh, people are shouting down on me, and you go into self-pity. He didn't do that. Bartimaeus would have said, oh, all this time I'm crying and shouting to Jesus, and I'm losing my voice. He would have shown me mercy, but he don't show me mercy. Let me leave him. But he don't do that. He didn't do that. Jesus did not respond to Bartimaeus, but Jesus was in his mind looking at him, taking note of his attention, taking note of his prayer. <laughs> I don't know how many hours Bartimaeus shouted. I don't know how many hours he prayed. I don't have any clue. <laughs> he started crying this morning. <laughs> Even though that Jesus did not pay attention to him, yet he was not discouraged. He did not consider that Jesus did not want to help him. The lack of response from Jesus did not mean I will get discouraged. I have prayed, I have fasted, that I want to get married, but I have not gotten married. But Bartimeu says to us tonight, even though I have been talking to him for the past 10 years, for the past 15 years, and I have not conceived, I have not gotten a man to marry me or a woman to marry. I have not gotten a job. Yet, I will continue to cry the more. I will cry louder. I will cry louder. As far as Bartimaeus was concerned, the best thing to do when Jesus appear or, in parenthesis, appearing not to be paying attention to your prayer, is to cry the more. People may tell you, is it by shouting that Jesus will hear you? That is the voice of the world anyway. Don't mind him. Don't mind them. Must you kill yourself? Every time you are praying morning, day, night, you are still praying and not answered you, and you still you think you are, he's going to answer you, don't answer them. Don't talk to them. When God gives you a testimony, they will join you to give thanksgiving. You hear that? <laughs> he falls. I don't know what is your story, but I have a message for you tonight. Do not give up. Blessing is on the way. Do not give up. Your testimony is by the corner. Sometimes it is that case at dawn. When your battle is about to come, when that's when the enemy unleashes the, the, the highest the enemies or powers of the devil to attack you. Do not give up. But news refused to give up. He refused to be discouraged. Even though that Jesus appeared not to even care about what he was talking to him about. As he cried more, he got his blessings. I wasn't there. But I'm, I'm expecting that since he was crying more, shouting more, trying to make his voice louder than the, the voice of the crowd, I would think he lost his voice. I mean, it's logical that right? he probably lost his voice. But even though he lost his voice, he got his testimony. Time has come when a child of God will engage in serious prayer. And even though you may lose your voice and you get your testimonies, it is worth it. It is worth it. <laughs> even the obvious distractions and the discouragements from Jesus' followers who are not strong enough to shut him up. My dear friends in Christ, Bartimaeus, 
today is a man that is strong, that is courageous, that refuses to be discouraged. And so I tell you today, don't be discouraged. And that is the title of this talk. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Can you talk to yourself about that? Maybe you look yourself in the mirror and say, don't be discouraged. Or don't be discouraged. You call your name and say, don't be discouraged. Your testimony is on the way. Don't be discouraged. Your favor is on the way. Don't be discouraged. Praise is on the way. Don't be discouraged. A time of laughter is coming. The sunshine will soon come. Don't be discouraged. But news is talking to us today. Do not be discouraged, children of the kingdom. My dear friends in Christ. <laughs> ah. Let us face the fact. How many of us have stopped praying the way we, we used to pray? Because of people. Because of friends. Because of parents. Because of husband. Because we don't want to displease somebody. Now, could you imagine what would be the situation of Black Muse if he had listened to the crowd? I mean, we know the answer, right? He wouldn't have gotten healed, period. That means if he had listened to the crowd, he would have lost his blessings. He would have lost his testimony. Do you know how many believers today that have lost their blessings because they listened to the world? Because they didn't want to offend somebody. Have you any clue of how many testimonies that are aborted every day because somebody has compromised? Because somebody do not want to be called a fanatic, a fanatical Christian. Sometimes if you if you start getting into deeper into Christ, even your church members, the same people that go and see Holy Communion with you, may start looking at you and telling my friend, <laughs> you are getting too too deep, oh. take it easy. People will tell you, is it not the same church I've been going before you? Why is it all different? Why are you taking it this way? The same people that go to the same church with you. The enemy can use anyone to talk to you. Even Peter, enemy used Peter to talk to Jesus. And Jesus said, enemy, set and get behind me. Do you know that Bartimaeus would have been put to shame if he had Listen to the crowd. How many believers today have lost their opportunity for salvation, for healing, for miracles, for divine favor, because they succumbed to spiritual and human pressure to stop praying? Do you have a club that? <laughs> if you used to pray more than you pray today, go back. Go back. It is by prayer that things change. You see? You cannot expect good to come. You cannot expect heaven to open without you making a sacrifice. You see, let me tell you something. There are, there are three ways that heaven can open for somebody. One is by sacrifice. One other is by prayer. And that is by obedience. Now, one of the most prominent ones is the power of prayer. And that is the method that Bartimaeus engaged. And when I say prayer, I don't just mean casual prayer. I mean 
persistent prayer. In fact, it is persistent prayer that opens the, op open the windows of heaven or the doors of heaven. Show me any instance in the scripture where people came together to pray and they are persistent in the prayer. And I will tell you where heaven opened. I want to talk about the blood, but the, the story of Elijah. There were three, three years and a half of, of drought in the land, no rain. He went and told Ahab, Hear up, go and eat your food. For there shall be a downpour today. But after telling Ahab there was going to be a downpour, heaven was going to pour down rain. Elijah did not make, give that prophecy and went to, he didn't go to McDonald's and start eating burger. You know what he did? The Bible says that he went into prayers. He went on his knees, put his, de his head down in between his two, knee his two knees, and there was praying, stormy heaven. Prayed and prayed on the point he, he sent his servant. Go and check if there's anything you see in the sky. The first time nothing happened. Second time nothing happened. Until the seventh time, the servant said, I see something like the hand of man. And that was a cloud. And there was a heavy downpour. So even though that there was a prophecy that there would be a downpour, but he did not stop there. He had to go into prayer so that heaven will open. And then there will be a downpour. And indeed, there was downpour because somebody prayed. <laughs> you see that? The same thing in Acts 12, where the disciples of Jesus and the apostles who were in the upper room and they were praying, praying that God will save Brother Peter, that Peter shall not die. And they were praying in that house, behold, heaven opened and an angel came to the prison where Peter was and delivered Peter. You see that? The power of prayer. Many of us enjoy prophecies. Many of us hear prophecies. Oh, it will be well with you. Oh, I see husband coming. I see great job coming. Those prophecies are amazing. I mean, sometimes God gives me prophecies. But you know what? If you do not engage in prayer, the enemy will fight that prophecy in order to make it not to come to pass. So when you are giving prophecy, don't go and fold your hand and say, oh, the man of God has given me prophecy. And so you go and cross your leg. It is time you have to be praying even the more. That power that abort people's testimonies shall not abort that testimony. Look at our brother Daniel in Daniel chapter 10, verse 7 and following. Actually, if you read from verse 10 down, uh, from verse 4 down, you see how Daniel fasted for 21 days and God answered him. God answered him. He saw it a vision. But it didn't come to pass. And then he went into prayers and said, crying to God again. And then God had to send the archangel. To do what? To go and deliver the angel sent to bring Daniel's blessings that was detained, that was arrested, that was put in the prison. The demons of Peshia arrested the angel of, of blessings of Daniel and they put that angel in detainment. If not that Daniel went into prayers, that blessing would have been kidnapped. Do you know how many times you have heard prophecies or you have seen the dream, powerful vision of powerful prophecies, and yet it didn't come to pass because somebody stopped praying? <laughs> somebody may have told the blind bad news. Look, I see a man whose name is Jesus. He is going about doing good, healing people. If you would go to him for any reason, I'm sure your situation will change. That's a prophecy. And behold, he, he had a opportunity to meet Jesus. But the cloud was an obstacle. And the blind Bartimaeus said, I must get healed. 
he now started to cry out and cried out the more. And he got his blessings. It is time for us to cry more to the Lord. If you think the Lord is not answering you, wake him up. I mean, if you think he's sleeping, what do you do? You wake him up, right? Oh, bro, how could Jesus sleep? How could God sleep? Anyway, remember Mark chapter 4, the story starting from verse 23, when Jesus was crossing the, 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 the lake with the disciples, and at the point, he slept. The storm came. The disciples, they did everything possible to stop the storm. The storm could not stop. They had no option to, than to wake Jesus up. If you think that God is sleeping in your life, if you think that God is sleeping in your situations, that is not hearing you, if that's what you think, wake him up. By doing what? By prayer. Aggressive prayer. Prayer is a level by level. The, the type of prayer used to chase headache is not the type you need to, <laughs> to pull down the wall of Jericho or to be delivered from the mouth of the lion. Or to behead Goliath. These are different levels of prayer. I read a book some time ago, things fall apart, saying if the bird learns how to fly without petting, the hunter will learn how to shoot without missing. Well, how many times have you identified that 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 bed have have refused to pitch. That blessing have refused to settle. And then you decide to engage that situation in a horrific prayer. Engaging in fast and prayers. Engaging in, in midnight prayers. Men are sleeping, but you are awake. You are praying. Men are waking up. That's when you are coming out of your prayer chamber. You are keeping your altar of prayer on fire. How can you be the same with such a person who doesn't pray? Prayer is powerful. And God today is calling us into people of prayer. He wants us to be people who are vibrant in prayer. God wants us to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and power. He wants us to be people who are very stubborn in prayer. People who can never take a no for an answer. People who want to pray down the rain of blessings. People who will go on their knees like Elijah and they will pray until the rain starts falling. People who will pray until something happens in the name of Jesus. Are you among such people? God is talking to us. The only way you can move heaven is if you will be a radical prayer warrior. If you will decide today to be a man of prayer, aggressive man of prayer, <laughs> such a person, when such a person is praying, the, 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 the power of his prayer will be acidic to the territories of the devil. It doesn't make sense that you are cold, you are not hot, and the devil is playing with you. And yes, you go to church. It's better you don't go to church, actually, really. Than you are going, and yet there's no change in your life. It's like going to a social club. You see that? If, you are, if your Christianity have not come to that level, then know that something's wrong. God is talking to us today. Jesus. Oh. My dear friends in Christ, we are calling on the power of the Almighty God tonight to come down with the power, to come down with the grace, to come down with the mercy, and vindicate us from every enterprise of the enemies. We are asking to make us people of prayer. Radical prayer warriors. We well, ask him to make us spiritual militants. Let him sanctify us. Let him make us people of fire. Look at Bartimaeus. <laughs> he refused to allow his blessing to be aborted. 
if today we will stand on the ground and say that we cannot succumb to the demands of the, this world, that we shall be on fire for Christ, I tell you, with a determined determination, we shall have it. We shall achieve it. We shall surely achieve it. Holy Ghost is here to help us. Let us go back to our altar. Let us go back to our altar. Altar of prayer. There's a covenant that the child of God has with Jesus through prayer. Jesus. Maybe you have fasted and prayed for a long time without a solution. You may have stopped crying to the Lord because you have not seen God intervene. It appears as if God is silent to you. But I want to bring your attention to the fact that Jesus did not respond to the blind Bartimaeus. He did not respond to him, you know, the first time he started crying. And that was why he raised his voice. Let us do what the blind Bartimaeus did. And we will get the testimony he got. The title of this talk is encouraging us never to be discouraged. Don't be discouraged, my friend. Don't allow distractions of the world, discouragements from the enemies to take you out of your blessings. Many people have gone far only to lose their blessings because of discouragement. God is talking to us. Let us go back to our fortresses. Let us go back to our prayer chamber. Let us go back to our altar. Jesus. Don't give up praying for that your child or children. Don't give up praying for your spouse. Don't give up. Don't give up praying for that some friend of yours. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. The enemy may be telling you after all these years and then you don't have to answer them. When God answers you, for sure he will. Then your testimony will silence them. God is talking to us tonight. Let us not discourage. Let us not become discouraged. It is very, very easy to get discouraged. Because the devil has one million ways to discourage people. Can you imagine after all these years and years of fasting and prayers and living a faithful life and you would just want to get discouraged? You can't do it. God is talking to us. Beloved in Christ, the situation around you may seem to discourage you from continuing your perseverance in prayer and fasting, but don't give up. Don't give up. The devil may be telling you there's no need continuing. Don't listen to him. The devil may be telling you, don't you see that the Lord is far away? He's not even paying attention to you. You have seen so much. Don't pay attention to him. It is time to make louder cry to the Lord. It is time to pray more. It is time to storm the heaven again in a way that you have never done before. It is time to pierce the clouds of heaven with your prayer. It is time to cry from the heart, deep groaning from the heart. As we do this, our morning shall come and the darkness shall be over. Let us make the sacrifice of engaging in the power of prayer. <laughs> the power of prayer is the power of God. So when you are praying, 
God releases power to meet you at your point of need. You see why it's good for us to pray? God answers prayers that we know very well. And it is through prayer that things change. When things become stubborn or maybe impossible in human sense, go to prayer. Did the Bible not tell us in Luke 1 37? The Lord had done great things. Great things. There is nothing impossible for him. <laughs> the Lord Almighty can do all things. There is nothing impossible for him. That's our God. For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1 verse 37. The Lord God Almighty invites the people to pray to him. Prayer to God should be something persistent. If I look at him verse 1, tells us that prayer has to be persistent. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to lose heart. Luke 18 verse 1. This is Jesus talking, telling his disciples the need for prayer and give them a parable on that subject. Go read Luke 18 and you see the story. And in verse 1 he told, told them, always pray and not lose heart. John 14 verse 1. He said, do not be discouraged. Trust in God, also trust in me. And that is Jesus talking. That's Jesus talking. He wants us to be people of prayer. And God hears the prayers of his children. In fact, God did not even suggest to us to pray, or to be people of prayer. God commands us to pray. He didn't suggest to pray when he's confident. No. He commanded us to pray and to pray persistently. So prayer is a command. Remember that even the disciples of Jesus had to tell Jesus, Master, teach us how to pray just like John the Baptist taught his own disciples how to pray. You know, before they asked that question or before they made that request from Jesus, they already saw Jesus praying. Living a life of prayer. Prayer is where things are settled in the secret, secret places. The glory of God is revealed in the place of prayer. It is through prayer you know the heart of God or the mind of God. When you are in distress, call on the Lord. That's why David in Psalm 18 verse 6 says, In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Where did this happen? Where David was praying. You won't go to hear your prayers, then get into prayers. You won't go to do something about your distress, then formula is prayer. Prayer. <laughs> David says in Psalm 17, verse 6, I call on you, O Lord, for you will answer me. I call on you. What does he mean? You call on God through prayer. And David says, and you will answer me. God will answer when we pray. You know why I have to answer? Because he commanded us to pray. He cannot command us to pray. And then when we pray, as led by the Holy Spirit, and then he will despise us. No, it doesn't happen. He will answer, but we have to wait on the Lord. He's on timing. You see that? Psalm 34 verse 17. And the Bible says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears him. He delivered them from all their troubles. The place of prayer. <laughs> prayer determines the outcome of events. If Black Bartimaeus had decided to pray, or to allow the crowd to talk him out of his prayer, the outcome would have been the same. He would have been blind. He would have died blind. If you want things to change, be a man of prayer. Be a woman of prayer. Prayer, again, let me repeat, changes the outcome of events. 
I have so many testimonies in my personal life that that buttresses the fact that prayer changes the outcome of things. And many of them have shared in this ministry. I'm not neglecting the fact that God can answer us irrespective of our faith. Okay? And when he's doing that, he do that in, in, in a platform of mercy and grace. But God is looking for people who will stand in the gap. Remember Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. I am looking for somebody who will stand in the gap. Who are those who will stand in the gap? Intercessors, people of prayer. To change the outcome of things. <laughs> so, Maria Christ, Christ, there is great power in prayer. The power of prayer does not flow from us. It is not special words we, we say, or, or the special way we say them, or how beautiful or enticing uh, or, or the they look like, or even how often we, we say them, the power of prayer is not based on a certain di direction we face, or in a certain position, or how we sit down, or how we stand up, or how we kneel. The power of prayer does not come from the use of things. In a way, we look at them humanly. But it is by connecting to God. It is by the disposition of the mind. A lot of people ask, oh, brother, should I sit down? I, I, my, my, my knees are paining me. I, I have arthritis. I, I, I cannot be able to, to kneel down and pray. I used to do that, but I can't do that. It's painful, brother. I'm not sure if I can sit down. I tell you today, sit down and make that prayer. God will answer you. The Bible didn't tell us that this is the way you must, the, the posture you must be before God will answer your prayer. Put your Put your mind in the, in the right perspective and God will answer. God will answer. Elijah knelt down and put his head on the ground. Some other person might, might be standing up and praying or sitting down praying and God will answer. Don't give up. The power of prayer will change the outcome of situation in your life. Before I end this prayer, I want you to bring you up two prayer points. Two prayer points. Two prayer points. I want to pray with you. I want to be in agreement with you. Two. Okay, make it three. Three prayer points. Three prayer points. Just mention them. Bring them up to the Lord. And we are in agreement today that as the church is praying in Acts chapter 12, that brother Peter shall not die by in the hands of Herod. And God sent the angel to answer their prayer. As we are praying now over these petitions, that your people are bringing to you, O oh Lord. We are asking you, Father, to deliver your people, to change the outcome of situations, O oh God, through the prayer. Father, where people are going to be victims of death, through this prayer, we command the arrow of death to go back to the senders in the name of Jesus. Father, O oh Lord, we use this prayer to alter the decision against your children from the occultic temples, from the occultic kingdoms, in the name of Jesus, our God and our Father, let the power of your name begin to deliver your people from anywhere the devil has engaged them in conflict, in the name of Jesus. Father, touch your people, oh God, the hour has come, let this prayer be the reason why your people will get testimonies in the name of Jesus. Let those who are sick be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We command all the powers of darkness that have ganged up against your life. Let them begin to catch fire this hour in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants you to succumb, I command them to begin to succumb now. Every spirit that wants to discourage your life from prayer, I command them to be discouraged now. Every spirit that is weary you down with troubles, wearing your life down with calamities. May God destroy them tonight and give you victory in the name of Jesus. May God do the prayer to hinder the powers of the devil against your life in the name of Jesus. May the grace of God locate you as God hear the prayers of the blind Bartimaeus. May he hear your prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. May he visit you at your point of need, even as he visited blind Bartimaeus in the name of Jesus. 
as you cry to the Lord in prayer, may God show up in your situations in the name of Jesus. May heaven show up in your situations in the name of Jesus. Where the world wants to silence you, may God silence them in the name of Jesus. I decree that shall be well with you, where the enemies are mounting pressures in your life, so that you will give up. I pray tonight, may divine grace come upon you. Every demonic attack against your life, by the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command such an attack of the devil to begin to be destroyed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I use the prayer to dismember the powers that are ganging up against your life in the name of Jesus. I cancel the mandates of the enemies against your life. May God strengthen you. May God fortify you. May God give you victory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We'll cover this prayer, brother of Jesus. And Father, I will give you all the glory for the wonders you have done tonight, for the miracles you have done in the life of your children. We'll cover the prayer, brother of Jesus, again. We'll cover the prayer, brother of Jesus, again. We'll cover the prayers, brother of Jesus. May our, play, our blessing multiply forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.